Welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to Nankina, Papua New Guinea. My name is Ryan and today we're heading from this bush location here in the highlands of Papua New Guinea up to Goroka. Just a 30 minute flight and about. So uh, let's go ahead and get started and get on our way. All right. So start. Energy's rising, oil pressure is rising. Stabilized, go ahead and introduce my fuel. My IGT is coming up. My NG is also coming up a little bit further, past 35 now. And watching the ITT, the trend of it. 639, going back down. Hey, right, generator on. Alternator, aux bus, prop out, turn our V2 tracker on. Get my flaps set up. Also start getting my rudder trim set up, as well as my elevator trim. So I'm out here at Nankina today. We were just doing helicopter shuttles just a minute ago. We had two, brought in some uh, passengers that were heading over to a different tribe that does not have um, a usable runway at this time. So we had to shuttle them over as, as well as some cargo over there. So anyways, just finished that. And now I'm heading back empty more or less. I've got a couple bags of coffee on board, but pretty much empty. We'll head back at 12,000 feet today. And uh, I'm going to head back a different way than I did last time I was out this way. I'm going to just head over the mountains right directly behind me. It's a beautiful day out. All right, fuel cap selectors are good. Controls, taws, definitely turn Betty off for here. We don't get yelled at because she'll be yelling terrain ahead and pull up. All right, and we've got 640 pounds of fuel on board. Go ahead and call up SAR, search and rescue after I take off. Uh, not having a good day with uh, HF radio or VHF radio at this location. Brewer seems to work. Chisholm in Instruments. We're 5440 on takeoff, so rotates 54 knots. Looks like a 152, actually a little bit slower I think than a 152. Maybe? I don't know. Leave a comment below if you fly a 152. And 63, if we had to come back for any reason whatsoever, we've got a caution for low fuel, but that's just because I'm on a hill, side slope, and it thinks that uh, the fuel's out of balance and everything. Not out of balance, but just low. Switch and instruments done, flap set at 20, indicated 20 and verified. Trim and abort, we've already done. I've got some people off my left up there, holding two hands up, that means don't go, one hand means go. Sometimes they just wave their hands, so I'm hoping that one hand means go, because that's usually what it means. All right, joint aboard is once we get to those people, if we have to stop on the runway, it's basically by the first cone before those people. Full reverse, heavy braking, flaps up, shut off, pull off, and shut off if we're going off. Go off to whatever side has the most grass, which I believe is the right side, some big tall grass. After take off, Pitch for 85, consider PL, consider feather, otherwise cut off, pull off, and shut off. 80 full flaps here, emergency button. Masters off, crack our doors close to the ground. All right, ignition on, inlet bypass, and lights are on. We'll do SAR here shortly. We're at 5,500, 20 degrees Celsius. So, 1420, so 13, 1370 on the torque. Ignition, condition flaps, 20 fuel and harnesses. Rotate 54, 1370. There we go. All right, here's Pizza Live. For 54, there's 54 there. Hit the bump and bounce off. My speed up. Like I said, we're going to be heading out right behind me, so I'm just going to get a little bit of altitude. Do a 180 of the mountains right behind me, I think, are like almost probably 11,000 feet. So I'm going to pitch over and get my best rate of climb going as fast as I can so I can get up there as soon as I can. So the best rate of climb in the Kodiak is. 
85 degrees with 20 degrees of flaps, but we're going to get those flaps out here shortly. Over 85, we go to 10 degrees of flaps. Over 90 and climbing, zero degrees. We're going to prop back 2,000 RPM. Brings our ITT from 740 down to 720. Usually, it's kind of slowly come down, but it looks like I'm still going to be off a tiny bit. We'll go ahead and bring it back manually. And it's just a gorgeous morning out here. We got the ocean out here in front of us. We've got Long Island out here. There's a huge lake in the middle of it. Actually, that's not Long Island. Long Island's over there. Anyways, yeah, just really, really nice morning. This is probably one of my favorite places to go just because of the view is just incredible. All right, pulse light off, landing light, bypass back to normal and igniters are off. Pretty much empty day, climbing out at the best rate, which is going to be 99 knots. We can get up over top of that mountain right there. All right, so we're climbing out at 99 knots. Pretty much staying stable at 1,150 feet per minute on my climb. Now that I'm up a little bit higher, still over top of Nankina, I'm going to go ahead and try to get a hold of our search and rescue, which is flight following. <laughs> Morsby 5565, November Tango Echo Departure. November Tango Echo Departed Nankina, time 27, on climb 12000. We'll be tracking 251, Garoka 56, and copy company traffic, November Tango Hotel. Departed Nankina time 27 on climb 1 2000, November Tango Echo. Hey, affirmative, November Tango Echo on climb 1 2000. Garoka time 56, November Tango Echo. All stations at Nankina, 123.9, November Tango Hotel, November Tango Echo, departed Nankina, passing 10,000, and currently just about three miles to the southeast of Mibu. All right, Ryan, I'm uh, just climbing through 7,500, about uh, three miles uh, west of Mibu. All right, I'm just going to jump over the mountains, pretty much almost a beam Mibu. Uh, kind of where the Mibu Gap is is where I'm heading, and I should be able to just pop over top of those at 12,000. All right, I'm headed for the uh, Tata, so I should be out of your way. All right, see you back, Kuroka. Okay. So the ocean's right down there, about uh, 15 miles to the basically the top of these mountains here. And these go all the way up to, I think, 13,000, really close to that along the Finisterre mountain range. Really, really rugged, super crazy steep, and uh, yeah, just a beautiful view looking out that way. We've got 15 knots of, uh, oh now 16 knots kind of rising, of quarter tailwind coming in here, so as I do come in close to the mountains, there's a good chance that I'm gonna get some nice updrafts just to help me push me out a little more. I've only got 400 feet yet, yet to go. And I'm seeing the other side just fine, so I'll clear it. No issues. But that's one way you can actually tell. I think I've shared with you guys before, if you're doing any mountain flying, how do you know if you're if you're coming up to the edge of a mountain, how do you know if you're gonna be able to clear it? The optical illusion sometimes makes you think that you're lower or higher than you actually are. So as you come up to it, if you're starting to see ground on the other side and you're seeing more and more of it, more and more of the horizon, then you'll you'll be able to pass it or you'll be able to cross it safely. If you're seeing less and less of the horizon kind of slowly disappearing, that means you're too low and you need to start climbing. All right, 20 feet to go. All right, there is 12,000. Just barely squeaking over these clouds by 50 feet. That works, all right, let's throw a heading and autopilot on. Our speed's up to cruise at 130 knots almost, so I'm going to bring my torque back to 1250. 
And that just let me know that it's five degrees Celsius outside. Just throw the pedo to or pedo heat on. This is my only flight for today, so I have a instrument competency check coming up. I think tomorrow. So I'll be spending a few hours probably in the simulator today, maybe not a few hours, maybe an hour in the simulator today, and just going over instrument procedures and all of that fun stuff. All right, it is chilly in here. Now we're on the other side of the mountains, and that's why we have all these bumps. We got 19 knots now coming over top of the mountains. But you have nice updrafts on this side, and the second gets over, it starts whirling like that, so on the far side of the mountains where all the bumps are. All right, now that I have done my SAR, I'm gonna go ahead and flip that so I know that my checklist is complete. You guys are looking for more like on the ground exclusive content. I made a video actually today of what we are doing on the ground today. What we, I do little videos when we land in places, throw up the drone, show kind of what I'm doing and what the people are like there. You know, sometimes I'll walk around their village or something, get some shots of the houses, and... Anyways, I made a video of that kind of stuff today, so if you're interested, check out my Patreon page down below, where I put that kind of content, also, like, photos and stuff you guys can download if you want to put it on your wallpapers, vision board, whatever you guys want to do. Uh, yeah, feel free to check that out. You guys, I thought of my flight back to Garoka. I go over some of the switches and a little bit on my instrument panel here, the Kodiak. I know a lot of you guys have shown some interest in specifically, you know, different systems of the Kodiak and stuff, so I thought I would just show you guys that today. So it has the G1000 um, and an S-Tech autopilot. This is the generation, more or less, one of the Kodiak, so they have a newer one out now um, that has the Garmin autopilot. But anyways, uh, if you're not familiar with the G1000 and you are interested in flying this on your X-Plane or Flight Simulator or whatever else, I'm just going to go through kind of the things here. Here on the side over here is your airspeed indicator. And um, you know how I've shown you guys, we put up our V-Wrap and stuff. It will actually put a little tape there. So let me just quickly show you. If I, I put like 100 and there you go. See the RF coming up here? That is the V-Ref tape. And then if you put one for V-Climb, it also puts one in there too. I'm not actually sure what it says. Let's bring it on up. It says CL. So anyways, um, I don't actually use those little tapes there that do pop up on the screen, but they are super handy, well, for some people. Anyways, this is our um, wind here. So we've got 16 knots of quarterly wind. And it actually breaks it down and shows you exactly where it's coming from. We have our ground speed and our true air speed and then our inset map. So on my inset map, I set up my terrain. You can just barely see a little bit of yellow. And then when we get close, it has red as well. And I like it on the little one rather than the big one because let's say I'm coming into the mountain airstrip, this whole thing is gonna turn red. And I don't really want my big screen turning red saying that I'm gonna hit the ground everywhere. So that's why I only have the inset, the terrain on that one. Here's my outside temperature here. And then whatever I have in on my GPS, where I'm going, it tells me how far I am from there. And then I have my nav two set up here, so um, which is right up here. So whatever I have set in this one, nav two is going to show here, and then my nav one or on my GPS. So I have it set up for GPS right now. Anyways, our uh, communications are up here, and then you can change it. Whatever COM one or COM two is COM one, COM two, top and bottom. We've got our distance here, 37 miles, that's to Garoka, that's the same as this little down here. And then estimated time en route is 12 more minutes to go. And then it shows me coming from Nankina back to Garoka. Anyways, that's what we have on the screen. Our transponder is just a 1200 here, and then our local time. I have it set up just for uh, 12 hour, I don't really like the 24 hour. And we coming over to this screen. Basically the same thing is on top. Um, it shows the same thing except for right in this little navigation bar. We have our cross track, which is basically how far off of track I am. So I'm 1.8 nautical miles off of my course at this time. I'm going to be landing at this time. 
my direct track and track, and then it shows my wind as well up here, 13 knots. So I like doing track up rather than like north up. So coming down the list here, we have our torque on top. I cruise at 1250, as long as my ITT is below 700. My prop or my NP is at 2000, and my NG is basically the percent of the turbine engine. So I'm running at 90, almost 96% of its capabilities. Our fuel flow is 300 right now. We do all of our fuel planning on 320. So if I'm at sea level, then I'm actually going to be flying by my fuel flow at 320 rather than my torque at 1250. We got our oil temperature, our amps. Like let's say if I were to like turn off my or turn on my landing light and stuff, you can see my amps are now going up. We have volts, my fuel, my flaps indicator. This is my elevator trim, my rudder trim, and my aileron trim. And we don't really use aileron trim too much unless you're out of balance. And then when you, that's which is this button here, you have to push both of them down together for one second, and it just goes one second intervals. This is our HF radio right here, and we can switch to different frequencies. And then our frequency list is right here. And I really know nothing about HF, how to work it. That's it. Um, here's our oxygen. When we flip it on, it shows you how much oxygen you have left in your canister in the back and usually I think we have about uh, to 10 hours worth of oxygen usually if it's full. Here's our ELT, our TAWS, this is how I turn Betty off right here. Um, this was not standard in the Kodiak. You can turn it off also by going into the GPS but it's just a huge pain. This is our V2 tracker which allows us, here's our switch, turn it on. That allows us to use our iPad to text back and forth to our home base. We have our standby instruments over here in case um, our PFD as well as our MFD, which is our secondary screen over here. They both, they're run on different computers, both of them. So even if this one goes out, I can hit the reversionary, revisionary mode and it makes all my screens the same. And then the same over here. If this one goes out, I can hit this button and it puts it on the screen. So it'd be a a miracle of God if everything went out, honestly, because I have one computer, two computers, and I also have all my standby instruments here, altimeter, um, attitude indicator, and our airspeed. Our star stall warning test. Oops. Just bumped my autopilot off. Uh, anyways, we've got 10 more, 10 more minutes to go. I'll just quickly go through these. Our masters. Avionics bus and our aux bus. Our aux bus runs our environmental controls, so we can run our blowers here or also in back. We have stuff that we use for starting, and our generator and alternator down here, and all of our lights. This is our engine inlet where we can put it under bypass, and then our pitot heats. I'm going to turn those off now. We'll be going down in a second. Anytime. We're below five degrees Celsius, so we're six degrees Celsius right now. Nothing at home, must be check or one, two, three, nine. One, two, three, nine, go ahead, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo, can you confirm if November Tango Hotel departed out of Nankina or Mibu? Affirmative, November Tango Hotel departed Mibu for Garoka. You should be able to get them on one, two, three, that's one, nine, or November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo Tanks, no additional traffic reported, contact Goroka Tower 15 miles. No additional traffic contact Tower 15, November Tango Echo. November Tango Echo. All right, we've got 18 miles to run Goroka. We just left 12,000 feet on descent. I'm going to go ahead and call up Tower here shortly. At 15 miles. I'm going to go ahead and start monitoring it now. Oh, it looks like just really another beautiful day here in the Garoka Valley. Garoka Valley is just about always beautiful, at least right over top. We're just coming through the Bennett Gap now. If you guys are familiar with anything here in Papua New Guinea, Medang is down there, the coast, and the ocean is down there. Mount Hagen is pretty much straight ahead. And Weewak is out that direction, about an hour and 15 minute flight. Garoka Tower, November, Tango Echo. 
Right, we're letting another ping echo, passing through the Bennett Gap, 1-1000 one, one on descent, your circuit 5-0, copy November Tango Hotel. November Tango Echo, run 835 right, wind light in favor, can H1021. Southwick, you're 190, on circuit right base, and put again right base. 1021, track report right base, 35 right, November Tango Echo. I'm going to go ahead and start up my landing checklist. Our selectors, our fuel selectors, and our brakes are good. I've got my TAWS, my train awareness system, turned off right now because we're just passing over top of these. I don't need any notifications that I'm close to the ground. Check our landing weight, 5,300 pounds. So we'll be coming in at 62 knots at the slowest. I don't really need to come in at 62 knots today on a big paved runway, but that's the slowest I want to be. Flip our landing light as well as our pulse light on, and then I'll get my engine inlet into bypass uh, here shortly once I start slowing down a little bit. So if we do need to go around for any reason, it's going to be power up. Pitch for 73, 20 degrees of flaps. You set my power to 740. Maneuver is required. So just talking about um, talking about your boards, I recommend this to everybody, even if you're just flying into you know, a big, huge paved runway or whatnot. You have no idea whenever a bird's going to come out or, hey, I forgot to put my gear down and now I'm in my flare, which I've, I've done before, um, where I forgot to put my gear down and I was nearly in the flare and, well, crap, we're going around. So it's good to talk about that and I actually touch everything that I'm going to be doing in the order I do it because usually when go-arounds come up, you're not planning for them. And if you're not planning for them and you don't really have the muscle memory on what you're supposed to be doing, um, yeah, in one of these kind of airplanes, you can over-torque the engine pretty quick if you're not paying attention to what to do. So that's why I say power up. Basically, top of the green on my torque, 20 degrees, pitch for 73, and then I reset my torque to 740 because I don't want to over-torque it and I also, so I'm not going to be pushing all the way. I'm just going to basically bring my needles all the way up as far as I can comfortably, just really quick. And then later I set it to my maximum torque that I can for my go around. All right, 5.3 nautical miles. Push the prop forward. Go ahead and bring it back down to around 450 foot pound of torque. Which is going to help us slow down. We're at 150 knots now. Autopilot off, there's the airport. Just tracking for a right base. Actually gonna bring it to 350 because I'm a little bit higher than I want to be. All right, lights and inlet, lights are done. Now inlet is done. Prop and harness, harness is done, prop is done. Three miles, go ahead and call base. Rocket Tower November Tango Echo, right base, 35 right. 138, 10 degrees of flaps. November Tango Echo, runway 35 right, clear to land. Clear to land, 35 right, November Tango Echo. All right, turning final, 5600. I right, bring my power back a little bit more, pitch up so I can get below 120 and get my 20 degrees of flaps in. All right, there's 5600. 500. Flaps checklist complete. I'm a little bit closer, so get my flaps in a little bit sooner today. All right, I'll plan just to land just past the 500 foot marker, just because just past the 500, between that and the 1,000 foot marker, there's a huge dip in the runway that drops about, I don't know, two or three feet probably between the sections. So I want to land just past that so it's kind of in the downhill of the runway. Right, full flaps, continuing. All right, well, this is Garoka. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch. I hope you guys enjoyed that short little flight. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help my channel grow and gets this video to other guys who haven't seen it yet.
So uh, thank you again for taking the time to watch. Be sure to subscribe if you do like this kind of content. I put out videos every Tuesday, every, no, correction, every Wednesday and every Saturday. So uh, yeah, thanks guys. Have a great one.